Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and in this video, we'll be reviewing the Lobster Shifter. This board is available in five sizes, 148, 151, 154, 156 wide, and 157. This board features traditional camber with sidekick technology in the tip and the tail. That way you get a spooned nose and tail, but you get straight traditional camber on a flat board. Basically, it's gonna have snap and pop. I rode this board at Arapahoe Basin in the spring on what could best be summed up as a good day on the East Coast. It was gray skies with little pockets of blue. The snow was firm and fast to like slightly softer in spots and little chundery, you know, temps were a little bit warm. There was some wind and I rode it with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my K2 Indy bindings. It's a twin park board that's slightly below middle of the road flex. So you have these huge sweet spots in the nose and the tail that are really easy to engage, then a slightly stiffer midsection that has a lot of torsional flex to it. Basically, you get a lot of play out in the nose and the tail, but a slightly more stable section underfoot, which means you're gonna notice chatter out in the nose and that will resonate back underfoot. But when you get into rutted out terrain and you're starting to feel those bumps and stuff, this is where the stability of the board is. It's a right underfoot. It does not wash out, and it kind of just plows through everything in its path. So I wouldn't say this is one of the snappiest boards I've been on, but it is solid. You load that camber up, and it rebounds and snaps. There is so much flex in the tail that you can really just leverage it to pop and boost you. When it comes to jumps, I think small to medium are where you're gonna wanna be. I really didn't hit anything over 15 feet with this thing. But for what I did hit, it got the job done, it did it well, it had the pop and spring that I wanted, and it was stable enough when I landed. This board is buttery, and what's nice is that sidekick keeps the ends of the contact points right at the upkick beveled up so you don't have to worry about them hooking so much. So you have a camber board that isn't really hooky right at the edges of the contact points. And these flex points are so sweet. They're right outside the binding, so you can really just get up on your nose or tail, get sideways, do whatever you need to do with this board, and not worry about it. And that translates over to how it jibs. This board locks into presses. As long as you're like square on the nose, like I just gotta stress that because you do have that sidekick, so it's a little beveled, but it will lock in perfectly to a nose or tail press. Having camber, it allows the board to just hug the feature, it slides perfectly. I mean, it's a jib stick. That's what this board really is. It's a softer, flexing park board that's better at jibbing, and it shines there. It really does. So setup carves and mellow to moderate carves are kind of this board's strong suit. When you really drive into the tail of this board, it'll sometimes wash out. It just doesn't have that power back there or that stiffness that you want, so you're just it's just going like a limp noodle back there. I mean, it holds an edge relatively well. You do have camber, so you're steering way out at the contact points. If you encounter some icy stuff, you can steer it underfoot. It's that soft that you can torsionally flex it where you need to. But I mean, if you're trying to rip hard, deep carbs, probably not really gonna happen on this thing. Who's this board for? The park guy that wants something that's close to a middle of the road, but is a little bit softer. This board wasn't bad and it could have been great if it didn't wash out on hard carbs. It was just, I was overpowering it just a little too much, which was kind of upsetting because everything else in this board is exactly what I would have liked out of it. It's nice to see that Lobster hasn't done all their boards with 3BT and you can tell that this board and the sensor from Nidecker are very similar, although the sensor is a little bit wider, I think. But I was looking at the tip shapes and they match up and they both have sidekick and they're both camper. And the sensor just, just fuck that thing. It's not, it just, it's too soft. This is better, in my opinion, just so much better. Comparable boards, the Niche Crux, the Rome Buckshot, the Ride Kink. This has been my review of the Lobster Shifter. Do you agree, do you disagree, do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about the snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications, and that way you're not missing any of the content we've got coming out for you guys. And believe me, we have a lot of content that comes out for you guys. And if you really like to support us and you wanna see us just grow all of our offerings, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I can tell you more here, but I've got a whole video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.